What is up guys, I hope you are all doing well. Yes, yes, I know, you don't want to hear a boring intro, so let's just jump straight into the video. When we look at the evidence about climate change, we find there are six facts suggesting that people are exaggerating things for commercial interests in big climate. We, friends of science, are a small group of qualified earth, atmospheric, and solar scientists and professional engineers who for 16 years have questioned climate hysteria. A channel called Friends of Science apparently spreads misinformation against science. Sounds exactly what a friend of science would do, am I right? Every day I expect my own friends to lie about me, don't you? We looked at the best known consensus surveys and we found it's not true that there's a consensus. Not at all. Only a very small group of scientists agree with the crisis view, and most scientists do agree. There has been some warming since the 1800s, but the cause is disputed. Is it humankind or nature? Okay, so a few things. First of all, there is a scientific consensus on man-made climate change. In fact, there's consensus on the consensus. I talked about this in more detail in a previous video, so I won't be going into too much detail now. Instead, I'll provide the link down below. Hopefully I remember. But yeah, in short, there have been numerous other studies that looked at the consensus of man-made climate change, and they all agree that there is between a 90 to 100% agreement on this issue. Oh, Professor Stake, I hear you ask, what about the pie chart that Friends of Science showed on screen just now? Worry not, let's take a look. So this appears to have been done by Pyser, who is trying to evaluate Naomi Oreskes' paper on climate consensus. Oreskes published a paper 15 years ago where she analyzed almost a thousand papers on climate change and concluded that there is overwhelming consensus, and that not a single paper disagreed with anthropogenic climate change. So then after that, Pyser tried to do a counter-study, if you may. And after rereading some of the papers, he supposedly found some of the abstracts had explicitly stated against the consensus, or so it seems. Turns out that later there was a re-evaluation on those papers, and most of them actually did not explicitly claim against anthropogenic climate change. And then later, Pyser himself himself retracted his statement, basically admitting he was wrong. Well, so much for that. But let's take a look at the graph you presented here. We'll take this with a grain of salt because this is Pyser's re-evaluation of Oreskes' research. The numbers are, in reality, much more favorable. Anyway, you're being dishonest when you point only to the green part there and saying that those are the only scientists who think that anthropogenic climate change is real. Anyone with eyes can see that the green part isn't the only part that matters. Just look at the description for the others. They all matter. You have implicit endorsed but focus on impact, mitigation proposals, methods, paleoclimate analysis, reject or doubt consensus, natural factors, and unrelated to climate change but includes the words global climate change. Now the first three on this most definitely most definitely means agreement with the consensus. Mitigation proposal suggests methods to reduce the effects of man-made climate change by mitigating our own impacts of greenhouse gas emissions. Now as you can see the only ones that actually reject the idea of anthropogenic climate change fall under the red and black zones here, which total up to 78 papers out of 1,126, a whole 7%. Of course this is before Pyser retracted his claim due to reanalysis of those papers finding that the majority of those papers don't actually reject the consensus. Welp, that's what happens when you use outdated, rejected graphs like this one. In addition, the papers here in the gray area that you claim state no position does not mean that they don't have a position. When the development of scientific research continues, you have to progress, so you don't always state already well-known facts. For example, if I publish a paper on cancer, I don't have to state in my abstract that cancer is real and what the cause of cancer is, because that is already well-known information. And that's exactly the same for many, many papers in climate science. Man-made climate change is already a known issue in the scientific community, without a shadow of a doubt, so there is no need to repeat that information. But if you go and interview these scientists directly, I'm sure they'd be happy to tell you their position agreeing with the consensus. Overall, this graph is flawed and has been retracted by the author himself, but even if it were factually correct, it still shows the scientific consensus. Isn't that just funny? Not to mention that there are numerous other papers out there that highlight this consensus, and your study only supposedly addresses one of them, so feel free to do the same for all the others. You're fighting an uphill battle here. There is a consensus on anthropogenic climate change and there's a consensus on that consensus, period. And in fact, the author of one of the 97% consensus studies, after completing the research, said, I'm actually more neutral on the issue now. I found it hilarious that he put on screen a paper that pulled thousands of scientists and found overwhelming consensus. It's the result of the paper that matters, not the opinion of the person who conducted the polls. I'm guessing that you're talking about Zimmerman here. What he believes in terms of climate change doesn't actually matter. What matters is that he conducted a poll that found that climate scientists all agree on anthropogenic climate change. Why would we care about the position of the person who conducted the poll? If I asked a few thousand physicists if they believe the universe is expanding and the vast majority of them say yes, does it matter at all if I myself come out and say I'm neutral on the position? 
proposition, especially if I'm not a physicist myself and I was the one who conducted the poll. What matters is the opinion and the consensus of the interviewed physicists, not my opinion. My opinion would only matter if I were a physicist myself, but I'm not. Yes, this is different than the previous scenario with Pizer because Pizer directly retracted his paper's statement, while Zimmerman was giving his opinion on the poll question and not the methods of the poll itself. So when we peel back, the climate crisis claims, and we look deeply at the evidence, we find there's good news. There's every reason to be optimistic about future climate and our life on Earth. You know, I wish that were the case. I wish that man-made climate change wasn't real and we could just continue what we're doing. Wouldn't everyone wish that? But sadly, that's not the case and we have to wake up to reality and deal with our problems now. Otherwise, it's the future generations that will have to clean up our mess. In the 1970s, there was a rise in carbon dioxide concentration and warming that appeared to be in lockstep. That's when people assumed that carbon dioxide drove that warming. But Earth scientists and solar scientists, most of them did not agree then, and our people did not agree. I'd love to see a source for that claim so that I can debunk it. And today we see that warming has flatlined, it most certainly has not. Just look at any graph, any graph from a reputable source, and you'll see that temperature has significantly increased since the Industrial Revolution, and there are no signs of slowing down. When I say reputable source, I mean it. There are a lot of misinformation out there, including people who just make up graphs in order to oppose this consensus. It's pathetic, if you ask me. And temperature changes claimed as the hottest year ever are usually very, very small. What matters here is not how much hotter it is than the previous hottest year, but rather that we're making significant record breaks almost every other year. That's not really a good sign, wouldn't you say? 2016 was the hottest year on record, followed very closely behind by 2015, 2017, and 2018, which take the 7th to 4th seats respectively. The hottest years on record all took place in the last few years. Why is it that this is happening now? I don't know, it may have something to do with carbon dioxide being released in large quantities into the atmosphere. Disclaimer, hottest years may easily be affected by various other factors such as El Nino, but I think I think there's still value in looking at the temperature for individual years. Even so, we have also have had the hottest few decades ever in the last few decades. So here's six points to consider in your climate change discussions. We won't be going over them all, but I'll try to address as many points as I can. 1. Climate has changed in a cyclical pattern of warming and cooling for thousands of years. I am so annoyed by this argument. The Earth's climate has been changing for thousands and millions of years, so therefore recent warming doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. There is one major difference this time, and that is the rate of warming. If temperatures rose slowly over thousands of years, it wouldn't be nearly as detrimental. Living organisms take time to adapt to changes. If environmental pressures are too great, natural selection cannot keep up. This applies to living organisms, but also to the climate system as a whole. Humans right now are emitting CO2 faster than the most destructive climate changes in the past, even compared to various extinction periods caused by rapid alterations of CO2 concentrations. If there will be additional warming from greenhouse gas emissions, that is projected by most experts to likely be only a tiny 0.7 degrees Celsius between now and 2100. But how much is that? Well, that's less than one degree on this thermometer. I hope you're using Celsius. <laughs> Alright. I don't know where you got the 0.7 degrees from, but that's certainly not the number. The median prediction of temperature increase is about 3.2 degrees Celsius by 2100. If you ever heard of the 2 degree increase being thrown around in the media, that's a pretty generous estimate, and hangs closer to the low end. It's actually set as sort of an arbitrary goal. But even if we meet that goal, the effects of 2 degrees is still not pretty. Now, I don't think I need to explicitly say what 2 degrees of increase would do to the planet, since I'm sure everyone has heard about it already. On paper, it may not seem like much, but we're talking about destruction of coral reefs reefs, decreased crop yields, greater floods, longer droughts, water scarcity, etc. I've included a link to an interactive webpage that highlights the consequences of temperature increase by 1.5 degrees, 2 degrees, and 3 degrees. It's very interesting, so I highly recommend checking it out. The consequences are scary, and if we continue what we're doing without any changes, we're looking at an increase much greater than 2 degrees Celsius. Don't forget that warming is a positive feedback loop which leads to even more warming. No matter what angle you look at it from, the future doesn't look too pretty. Warming of about a degree will be beneficial to the northern countries, and it may only have nominal impact on hotter countries. In fact, where do people from winter countries go to vacation or retire? They go south, where it's warm. 
Yes, some places will experience positive effects from global warming, such as fewer deaths due to the cold or greater crop yields in northern latitudes. But these benefits are not only area-specific, they are also heavily outweighed by the negatives. Crop yields will heavily decline in other places of the world. People in warmer areas will suffer more to heat-related deaths. Rising sea levels will decrease land area. Ocean acidification will heavily alter ecosystems. Only naming the positives is heavily dishonest since negatives are so much more impactful. And claiming that people go to warmer places for vacation is not a valid argument. There are some indicators that suggest a cooling period may be in process. Oh, would you look at that? We've already hit the 10 minute mark. You know what that means. I don't have to get into another headbanging session where I listen to a denier twist data into claiming that the earth is somehow cooling. No sir, that is not happening. I'll address it in the future. Right now, there are a few videos about climate change I made where I said, maybe I'll make a part 2 to this, so I'll just add that to the list. I'll make a video in the future where I tie up some loose ends. Sounds like absolute fun. And since I talked about climate change way too much lately, I'll take a break from this topic. No, that doesn't mean I'll make more flat earth videos. Anyway, thank you specifically to Fireshard for being the top Patreon this month. I'll see y'all later.